Today I would like to talk to you about artificial intelligence photography or whatever it's called. It seems to be a pretty hot topic these days. Artificial intelligence photography, AI photography, AI images, AI software creating those images. Nothing new. Artificial intelligence photography and uh, image generating software has been there for a while, for sure a couple of years now. But apparently it's getting so good, so advanced that uh, it started appearing just recently in all possible, you know, photography related groups, forums, you know, magazines start writing about it. We have New York Times articles, we have Washington Post articles covering AI photography. So, first of all, what is it? Artificial intelligence, computers, machines, software creating images. I will describe very briefly, very briefly what it is. So basically, you sit down at your computer, you fire up AI software, and you start typing in a phrase, it's also called the prompt, of what kind of image you would like the software to create. So let me give you an example, very simple example. I'm sitting in a, a hotel now in Seoul, in South Korea, uh, looking out, out my window. It's a pretty busy street full of people, you know, shops all over the place, cafes, you know, department stores. Seoul is a crazy place. I forgot my camera. Or maybe I don't wanna, I'm too lazy to get up and, 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 and go out there and start photographing. So I open a piece of software on my laptop or on my phone for that matter. And uh, I start typing. Create a photograph of a very busy street in Seoul, South Korea full of people, midday, people with shopping bags, elegant people, people in a rush, and it's raining. I can type whatever I want into this text prompt field. The software, and there is a couple of those softwares, you know, I will, I will link to them into the description of this video below, takes around, you know, up to one minute maybe, maybe 30, 40 seconds, and creates an image for me, and creates a photograph of a rainy day in Seoul with a very busy street full of walking people running with shopping bags. Now, is it photography? Let me start with a very, very quick answer, my personal answer. It's not photography. For me, it has nothing to do with photography. And you know, I'm running a photography magazine, running a couple of Facebook groups, you know, Instagram pages and so on and so forth. So I'm, I talk to people on a daily basis, I, I chat with them, I discuss, and there is as many definitions of what photography or what photograph is, as many of those members, you know, and, and photography enthusiasts are out there. For me, it's not photography. And let me tell you why. Call me a purist, you know, call me a traditionalist, call me a person stuck in the past. But, for me, this tool, prerequisite, it's a requirement. Holding a camera in my hand, it's a must when I want to create a photograph. I have to capture something which is in front of me, in front of the lens of my camera, in order to even start thinking about creating a photograph. Now. What I have just captured in here, in my camera, and it's a digital camera, so it was saved on the sensor. What I captured just now, it's not the final file, it's not the final picture, final image I will be presenting to the public. Of course it's not. I'm not that stubborn, I'm not that stupid, and I work on my images myself. I convert them into black and white, I add grain, I crop them, I change the color balance, I change the tonal range, you know, I work on the highlights, on the shadows. Occasionally, and in my case, it's very, very occasionally, I will remove, you know, a piece of litter, a piece of paper or a cigarette, you know, there on the street, which ruins the picture. I don't like doing that, but it will happen. But it still will be a photograph for me. It started with a capture, with a capture of the of an actual scene in front of me. It started with something me, Tomasz Trzebiatowski, walking down the street reacted to, with something that caught my eye, with something that triggered some emotions. 
which resurfaced certain memories, you know, and only me, only me, Tomasz, I was able to react to this particular juxtaposition of elements, of light, of shapes, of movements. That's why I took this picture. No, AI photography is not photography for me. And now let me take it to another level. Let me switch the topic a little bit. In my personal opinion, and it does reflect in the way I run, you know, the Frames magazine and just basically the way I look at, at visual art. For me personally, photography and digital art, digital imaging are two different categories which occasionally can overlap a little bit. Let me give you an example. I took a photograph on a digital camera, it can be also an analog camera, I scan the positive, you know, the print, I scan it, I import it into my computer, into my image editing software, let's say Photoshop, and I add a texture, a layer of a graphic texture, be it, you know, scratches or maybe some kind of a grainy layer, to change the mood or even, let me put it better, to more accurately reflect the mood and the atmosphere of this particular scene which I was photographing, the way it was saved in my memory, in my personal memory. So I can work on this image, I can add some layers of, you know, graphical textures, change the contrast, change the tonal range, change the color balance, whatever, but I will do it only and only to this extent that the final image, the final photograph absolutely reminds me of what I saw in front of my eyes when taking this, this very picture. It's a personal boundary. Very often I, I look at images which I'm sure originated as a photograph in the first place, but the modifications and the edits applied to those images are so extreme, so advanced, that they are changing the character of the original photograph to this extent I simply can't call it a photograph anymore. The amount of digital elements, the amount of foreign shapes, foreign external digital elements added to the image which were not present there in the first place. They were not present in this original scene. It's not a photograph for me anymore. That's basically my take, my very traditional take on AI photography. One last very important distinction here. When we think about AI, artificial intelligence, you know, software these days, it can do two different things. It can generate images from scratch based on our text prompts. So it, it, can, it can generate images which did not exist on any sensor or any film. Nobody captured those images before. These are new, completely imaginatory, AI-generated images. The second mode we photographers can use AI these days is to enhance our existing photographs. And that is absolutely fine with me. Let me give you an example again. I take a portrait of a friend, I download it, I look at it, you know, I open it in Photoshop or whatever uh, software I might be using, in my case would be Lightroom. I love the image, I, I love the pose, I love the lighting, I love the, you know, the entire atmosphere of this, of this image. But I can see that my shutter speed was probably a bit too long, so the image is a little blurry, such a pity. That's where artificial intelligence can help me. Artificial intelligence photography related software can sharpen or can unblur, whatever word you want to use here, a blurry picture. So I can import this blurry picture, blurry portrait of my friend into this AI software and it will produce perfectly sharp image for me. It will correct, it will eliminate this blur. Is this pushing boundaries for me? A little bit, but let's be honest, you know, this kind of AI tools were present in Photoshop for years, sharpening, replacing the areas with uh, content-aware pixels, you know, so fixing the images, you know, removing those pieces of garbage from the street or whatever you want the software to remove. Of course, it's based on AI. It's the intelligence of the computer. It's the software doing this for us. Today, the level of those um, enhancements and the amount of help we can get from the computer is without comparison, way, way bigger. But that's fine, you know, sharpening, increasing contrast, you know, fixing images, that's fine. 
people have been doing it in the dark rooms for years, right? But generating images, adding elements to images which were not present in those scenes, you know, at the moment of capture, not for me. Enough of rambling for this very first episode. Let me know in the comments what you think about artificial intelligence software, about AI photography in general. Where is this boundary for you? Are you a traditional photographer? Do you like grabbing a camera, walking down the streets, driving into the landscape, photographing your friends, you know, people, portraits, with your camera, changing the lenses, deciding on your angle, deciding on the light, looking for the light, or do you prefer to click a button, have it done for you in 40 seconds, you know, and possibly add your name under the picture? Let me know. Would love to hear from you.